Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. Ed, we're starting out. So, if I, everybody have your attention, call, call the meeting to order. It is our regular city council meeting for Tuesday, January 17th, 2023. If you would, please rise and we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We'll do our roll call, please. Dick Frank. Present. Barbara Bynum. Present. Doug Glasgow. Present. J. David Reed. Present. Ed Uliberry. Here. All city councilors are present. Thank you. Are there any changes to the agenda, additions or deletions? Not that I'm aware. Thank you. This next is our call for public comment for non-agenda items. The call for public comment agenda item is a time when concerned members of the community may publicly voice their concerns and discuss items of interest. Please note that no formal action will be taken on the matter raised during this time. Is there any member of the public that would like to address council? Seeing none, we can bypass the rest of that language. And move on to item number six, the approval of minutes, city council consideration of the minutes of the January 3, 2023 regular city council meeting. And we would entertain a motion. I move, go ahead. Second. <laughs> Somebody's got to actually make the motion. I move to approve the oh, minutes of the January 3rd, 2023 regular city council meeting as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Third. Roll call vote, please. Yes. Robert Bynum? Yes. Doug Glasgow? Yes. J. David Green? Yes. Ed Ferry? Yes. We have some votes. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven. City Council consideration of Ordinance 2611 on first reading, an ordinance of the City of Montrose, Colorado, granting and authorizing the conveyance of an interest in city-owned real estate pursuant to Article 1-9-2 of the Official Code of the City of Montrose. And this is Planning Manager Chase Hopwell. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Good evening, City Council members. Uh, I don't want to belabor this one too much. I know we've gone through it um, a couple of times over the course of the last few weeks or so, but just for the public record, it's slightly different than the last um, the last time you saw it. Not for the proposal, but just how it's being processed. So um, the item I have in front of you tonight is related to the conveyance of 0.62 acres from the City of Montrose to James Renfro. Uh, the first step in this transaction of this transaction um, basically is uh, for it to come to city council for approval of the actual sale of the property. So the last uh, city council meeting, what you heard was actually uh, authorizing you as the mayor to sign that agreement. Now we're moving forward with the step to actually convey the property. So that's the point of the meeting tonight. Um, again, won't go into too much detail, but uh, I'll just give a little bit of background here. Uh, James Renfro owns the property at 2400 Columbine Lane. That's the property with the star on it there in the middle of the screen. Uh, and adjacent to the south there is the city golf course, the Black Canyon Golf Course, uh, which the city owns. So Mr. Renfro approached the city about a year ago to acquire a small piece of property that's actually uh, owned by the city as the golf course. Uh, it's unmaintained, it's undeveloped, uh, directly adjacent to his property, and he just wanted to acquire it to uh, continue to maintain it and actually have it work a little bit better for curb appeal. Here is a more specific map. Uh, this shows the current parcel that Mr. Renfro owns, and the blue portion is the area that is proposed to be acquired. Uh, no different from what you saw in the last meeting. Um, again, that total area uh, outlined in blue is approximately 0 0.62 acres, uh, currently lacks any vegetation, serves really no functional purpose to the golf course as it sits today. This shows uh, what the parcel boundary would be after the boundary line adjustment. So this is not creating any new additional lots. This is actually just consolidation of that 0 0.62 acres 
into Mr. Renfro's uh, current property. Um, and this would be essentially the outline of that new parcel, uh, again, encompassing that, uh, that unvegetated area to the south. <coughs> And then lastly, uh, again, I, I discussed this at the last meeting, but this is the subdivision flat. Um, <coughs> and really what it is, is a boundary line adjustment. Uh, this was internally reviewed by staff and conditionally approved. Of course, the condition being that city council would approve the sales transaction. Um, this would be recorded with the county clerk and recorder following the execution of that sales contract, uh, which essentially would commence on February 8th or the next um, city council meeting, assuming again, it's approved. Um, so again, no new information here, just uh, just giving authority to city council to actually uh, get rid of this piece of property. I'm happy to answer any questions. We also have the applicant available for any questions, so. Any questions from council? We did have a re really good presentation on this at our last meeting, so I think you ended it with great detail, explained it very well. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was just curious as to uh, where did the funds go when, uh, with the sale and what department? Does it go in the city? What? General. It'll be a general fund. General fund? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. The only time it would go into an enterprise is if it's water, sewer, or trash, or one of the designated subject funds. In that case, we will hold a hearing. I will open the hearing. Is there any member of the public that would like to address council on this issue? Seeing none, I will close the hearing and entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt ordinance 2611 on first reading as presented. Second. <coughs> motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Roll call vote, please. Dan Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Shoot! Yes. <laughs> yes. J.D. Berry? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. We have a unanimous vote. <laughs> Moving on to item number eight, the Spruce Point Subdivision Filing Number Three Final Plat. City Council consideration of the Spruce Point Subdivision Filing Number Three Final Plat to create 36 new residential lots and dedicate rights of way and or easements and again, Jay Sockwell. Uh, thanks again, Mr. Mayor, and good evening again, City Council. Um, the item I have here is, uh, as you mentioned, it's a request uh, for a final subdivision plat. Uh, the total acreage is actually 23.26 acres, and the site is located in southwest Montrose, uh, not directly adjacent to the north of Cobble Creek, uh, the Cobble Creek Golf Course, but as you can see, it's uh, on the map there, uh, outlined in red. So just for some project background, as I mentioned, the uh, total acreage is 23.26 acres, and the proposal this evening is uh, for 36 new residential lots to be created. Uh, additionally, with uh, 1.83 acres of dedicated open space uh, and 13.56 acres of uh, reserved area for future phases of development. So this is essentially just a phase of uh, a larger scale, <coughs> excuse me, a larger scale subdivision. Uh, the zoning of the property is R3A, which refers to medium high density residential. Um, that's shown, the, the zoning map is shown there on the screen. Uh, the property is part of a larger Spruce Point addition, which was annexed back in 2004. And while the zoning is R3A, there's a, an existing zoning ordinance, and this is ordinance number 2021, that states that the overall Spruce Point addition has the condition of containing a maximum of 269 dwelling units. Uh, with the approval of this final plat, if it, if it is approved, there would be a total of 62 residential lots uh, within the overall Spruce Point addition, uh, which still remains well below that threshold, but this is something uh, staff will certainly keep an eye on as future phases move forward. Um, so here's uh, the final plat requirements. These are fairly basic. Uh, a lot of the review done by staff is done at the preliminary phase in terms of the infrastructure and a lot of the other components. Um, but in short, all lots meet dimensional requirements required for the R3A zoning district. Uh, and as indicated, a, they fall well below that threshold that's outlined in Ordinance 2021. Um, in addition, all surrounding streets uh, must be in place and approved by the city engineer and confirmed with Scott Murphy, and he can speak to the streets and infrastructure a bit more, but all is well there. 
uh, as well as the easements being dedicated, uh, the city water mains, sewer mains, and utilities being installed. So these have all been looked at, constructed at this point, uh, and it's really ready for platting. Uh, the next couple of slides here, I know um, it's really, these, these are large scale documents, it's easier to see them in person and up front, um, but they are the actual mylar plats, uh, or excuse me, just the, the plat that you're looking at here. Um, this is just the cover page uh, with all the legal language. This is the overall parcel, or I actually believe this is the west portion of the parcel, and this is the east portion, which is... The, really the portion that's formally being subdivided. This is where the 36 lots are, and this is on the, again, the eastern portion of that larger parent parcel. Um, again, yeah, we've got a couple of tracks that you can see within this slide uh, that are going to be retained as open space. Um, so those will be amenities within the HOA. But that really concludes my presentation. It's, it's fairly straightforward here uh, for a final plat. Uh, happy to answer any questions. The applicant team is also here for any questions. Yes. Uh, that, those uh, lots, are, are they uh, gonna be a, a, like a sewer line is gonna be natural flow or is it uh, through pump stations like uh, mm -hmm. we have in some of the other subdivision just to the south of Great question, I'll let Scott answer uh, some of these. In the <coughs> yeah, all of Spruce Point is gravity flow down to a common lift station, which is a good model, so it allows, the ones are a little more problematic because they're all individual pumps. This allows it to be centralized, and then you know, someday if Trump continues to that area, those lift stations can be eliminated, um, just like we did a couple years ago, and uh, kind of leaves it to, this, to where the system at some point could be all gravity, all the way down. Um, right now, we, the city takes care of the centralized lift station. Where's the lift station in this area located? Um, so from that, what's shown there, Sanctuary Drive, yep, if you go back, right, yeah, that would work too. Um, um, kind of in the northwest corner there of that area that's outlined in the red. Okay. Up here. Yeah, right over And then it runs by pressure all the way back to the rec trail. Down the Cobble Drive, it's quite a ways. The only question I had was concerning on the um, or northeast corner that temporary drainage and yeah that's not terribly uncommon these things if you go to that overview drawing maybe back one case um so the tension ponds for these subdivisions are always at the kind of the, usually in the lowest corner which in this case is also the northwestern corner and so as you start building you know usually you're building from where the infrastructure is closest which in this case is 6450 road which is on the right side of your screen on the eastern side and so you kind of build and push your development out in phases but you don't want to move your rebuild your pond every single time so you build the pond at the lower end and then in order to make sure that drain drainage is legitimate across kind of no man's land that isn't developed yet um, we'll have them put an easement so it's memorialized that it's okay for that water to come through there um, and then when those further areas develop that would get moved into its proper location um, kind of piece by piece as you march your way west in this case you know, the reason I was asking about that is because it, it delineates that as um, tied to lot number one in the notes. To lot one or out lot one? Out oh, out lot one. one. That, that's, that's, <coughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. yeah, that's the idea is um, be across there so that you can get across that spans and then modify as future development of out lot one occurs. All right, that answers my question. And tract D and tract G. I think that's how they're labeled. Those are open space requirements that are going to be owned and maintained by the HOA. That is, <coughs> excuse me, that, that is correct. Yep. Any other questions? I think that clears up. We would accept public comment. If there's anyone who wants just to address us on this. Seeing none. In a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Spruce Point subdivision filing number three. The final plat expressly conditioned upon the city staff to ensuring that all policies, regulations, ordinances, and municipal code provisions are met and that the applicant adequately address all of staff's concerns prior to execution of the final plat. 
The city staff is not authorized by this approval to execute the final plan prior to all conditions being satisfied. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glassbell? Yes. J. David Reed? Yes. Ed Uberry? Yes. We have a unanimous vote. <coughs> Thank you. Moving on to item number nine, the 2023 equipment purchase recommendation, city council consideration of the purchase of four dump trucks, an asphalt recycler, and a police armored vehicle for the total amount of $1,772,924. Jim Scheid. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and council. Uh, so yes, we have a recommendation to purchase four different types of equipment and um, nothing has changed on this since we discussed it at work session, but I can go through them quickly as a brief review. Um, so the dump trucks, uh, yeah, there are four uh, different dump trucks that, that we have um, budgeted for in both in 2022 and <coughs> 2023, uh, which we recently put out a, an RFP to um, receive bids for these four trucks. Um, we did receive uh, several qualified bids, and of those bids, uh, we did select TransWest and OJ Watson out of Grand Junction um, for uh, those trucks, again, for compatibility, availability, um, and, and function of the equipment. So there were, there were several reasons, um, one of them being lead time. That's something that's significant now when we receive proposals is looking at how far out these uh, estimated delivery times are. Um, so the second item would be our asphalt recycler. Uh, this item is procured through a cooperative purchasing agreement, which ensures that we're utilizing government pricing on previously awarded contracts. Um, this is an item that would be used to reuse our asphalt millings from street projects, um, and, and basically it's a small hot asphalt plant that we're able to use for uh, mainly for pothole repair, but also for some small patches in the road. Um, What's nice about this is it can be used year round. Um, the third item is the uh, police department armored vehicle. This also was procured through a quadruple purchasing agreement. Um, and this is a replacement. So this is um, an item that we've been collecting for its replacement through the fleet fund <coughs> and um, have collected enough to uh, replace it this time. So uh, the fourth item is a uh, tractor trailer combination that we would be purchasing for use in multiple different divisions. Um, six different divisions within Public Works um, would utilize a tractor trailer for hauling uh, large equipment, loaders, excavators, uh, things like that, and also for our in-house um, CDL training um, so that we're able to obtain a Class A CDL um, within our own training in Public Works. Um, Overall, budget-wise, these are all budgeted in several different places depending on what they are. Replacements come from the fleet fund, um, and that was probably that was over budget. Um, some of which because of the dump trucks. Um, some were budgeted last year and are being purchased purchased this year, um, and that, that's a portion of the reason. Um, also, the armored vehicle, which is a replacement, also was slightly over budget. Um, the asphalt recycler is very close to being on budget. Um, 97,000 versus the budget amount of 95,000. And then the um, tractor trailer that is budgeted, that will be purchased at an auction. Um, so we will stay under the budgeted amount um, when we go purchase that vehicle. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions on any of those. Any questions? No, I just wanted to make a comment about that uh, asphalt recycler. Uh, I think that's gonna make a difference to the community, especially if we can uh, do our patching all year round with that thing and uh, it's it's going to make Montrose the streets a little bit better to drive during the winter time cold. I agree looking yep. forward to it. Yep hot patch versus cold patch. Cold yep. patches is a band-aid yep. and the hot patch is more permanent so it makes a big difference. Can you send us a picture of what that asphalt recycler looks like? Definitely. I'm kind of curious. I can't picture it. Okay. I can picture a dump truck. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need I to will. send a picture of that. But I can't quite figure out what this one looks like, but I like it. Definitely. I'll send you one. All right. No other questions. We'll accept public comment. And seeing none, entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of four dump trucks and asphalt recycler 
and a police armored vehicle with a total amount of $1,772,924 is presented. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion on the motion. Roll call vote, please. Dave Frank? Yes. Barbara Bynum? Yes. Doug Glasgow? Yes. J. David Reed? Yes. Ed Uliberry? Yes. We have a unanimous vote. Thank you. Next item is staff reports. Our sales use and excise tax report. Shane Wittenberg, our finance director. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. So this is the November collection of sales use and excise taxes for um, 2022 compared to November of 2021. And you probably don't have that in your packet, so you don't see. Do we can see it reflected up there, but <laughs> <laughs> we can see it. Learn to read backwards. <laughs> and we have the we have the spreadsheet. We in have our the packet. Other okay. All right. Well, for the public's benefit, I'll go through this, and then next time I'll get it in your packet, so you can see it. So, it's, uh, sales and use tax is collected at three percent. The general fund compared to um, retail sales compared to November 2021 is up 8.3%. Construction use tax is down in November 68.6%. Use and auto use tax up 24.6% with total collections up 6.3% and a positive budget variance of 24.6%. Year to date in the general fund retail sales tax is up 11.1% or approximately $2.1 million. Construction use tax is up 15.5% or $126,000. Use and auto use tax is up 9.6% or $135,000 with total collections up 11.2% or $2.36 million. Positive budget variance year to date of 29.3% or $5.3 million. Moving on to the public safety sales and use tax. In um, January 1st of 2020, we began collecting 0.58% for public safety. November compared to November of 2021, retail sales tax is up 7.8%. Construction use tax is up 174.7%. Use and auto use tax up 24.6% with total collections up 16.2% and a positive budget variance there of 34.1%. Year to date, the public safety fund retail sales tax has been collected 11% more than we did November, through November of 2021, or $404,000. Construction use tax is up 24.5% or $48,000. Use and auto use tax up 9.6% or $26,000. Total collections up 11.5% or $478,000. Again, another positive budget variance of 27.9% or a million dollars more has been collected. Um, the Montrose Recreation District, back in 2014, we agreed to uh, collect 0.3%. That was through a vote of the people. In November, we collected $223,735, which was an increase of 16.1% compared to November of 2021. Year to date, through November, we've collected basically $2.38 million for the Rec District, 11.4% more than we did through November of 2021, or $245,000. Excise taxes, these are um, percentages that we add to the sales tax. So hotel, hotel excise tax adds 0.9%, restaurant adds 0.8%. November compared to November of 2021, hotel excise tax up 35.9%, restaurant down 5.9%, total collections down 1.7%. Budget variance of 13.6%, which is still positive, not a bad thing. Um, I was sitting next to Lisa at the work session and she mentioned that maybe it has something to do with the flu. Um, so if Montrose had a higher flu season, maybe that's why restaurants are down. Year to date excise tax collections compared to 2021, hotel excise tax is up 18.8% or $25,000. Restaurant excise tax up 7% or $37,000 with total collections up 9.4% or $62,000. Again, a positive budget variance of 25.5% or $145,000 more has been collected through November um, compared to 2021. No, compared to our budget, sorry, I misspoke. Retail sales enhancement, this is the portion of the vendor's fee that they gave up to promote sales in Montrose. Compared to November of 2021, 
where up 10% or $48,510 was collected. Year to date, we've collected $554,882, up 11.1% or $55,000. So all in all, sorry, not too fast. Um, everything looks great for sales and use tax as of now. Um, too early to predict December or the year end, but we'll get those numbers to you as soon as we have them. About how long will it be before we know our December numbers? Um, they should be filed in the 20th, so what, three days from now, and then compiling all those reports, um, we should have them, I would say, the end of the first week of February, just right after the first meeting of the month, so for sure at the second meeting. Great. Any questions? Thank you, Shane. You're welcome. Uh, we do not have a Youth City Council. Any other staff comments? Chief Hall. <clears throat> so I need to get to my email that I had. I wanted to bring this up. I brought it up today in work session, but just wanted to announce that uh, Montrose County has changed their emergency alert system and, and uh, essentially gone to a new vendor um, as a result of that, um, our citizens need to log in and sign up again. Um, unfortunately, the information doesn't pass from the old vendor to the new vendor. So I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, our citizens can go to MontroseCountySheriff'sOffice.com forward slash Montrose dash alerts forward slash uh, to change their information and log in, or they can just text Montrose County uh, to 65513, get a link and then update their information. Uh, this doesn't just affect Montrose County, but Gunnison County, Ray County, San Miguel, and Hinsdale counties as well. They all decided to join the same vendor. So just wanted to throw that, throw that out there. It is important that our citizens sign up for this because that is the best and quickest way that uh, our community members will receive emergency notifications. Thank you. I went on this afternoon and it took about two minutes. It's, it's very simple. Clear. Thanks. Thank you. Any other staff comments? And we don't have our Youth City Council member today. Uh, Ms. Mayor, I was just speaking with their representative. She says she doesn't have anything for this evening. Very good. I, I see you back there, but you were not up here, so I'm not quite sure. Perfect. City Council comments. Um, In that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll make, we'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Joint motion. We are adjourned. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>